Now we'll look at um, other functions you might be expected to be able to sketch. So let's start off from the beginning. We've got um, polynomials. So the first simplest type would be a linear, where we've just got our highest power of x is 1. Then we've got a quadratic, which we looked at last time. Highest power of x is x squared. Then we have the cubics that have this sort of shape. And you can see every time you add a power um, to your highest power of x, you add another kink in your graph, or another turn, and it carries on for like that uh, for every power that you add. Now, realistically, the ones that you get asked about are the linear, quadratic, and cubics, although you can be expected to know the higher powers, they don't come up very often at all. You also need to know what the modulus looks like. Now, modulus means the absolute value or take all the positive values um, of your function. So if y equals the modulus of x, you've got the line of y equals x in the positive quadrant, we're fine. That's just positive. We draw it exactly as it is originally. But that in that negative quadrant down there where you've got um, minus values of x's, we need to um, turn those around so that the minus value of y actually becomes a positive value like this, and it gets reflected up in that um, x-axis. And that's true of any function. If we want to do the modulus of that function, we just reflect up the part that goes below the x-axis. So we could do this for, say, x squared minus 4. So that's what x squared minus 4 would look like, but if we're doing the modulus of it, anything that goes below the x-axis has to be reflected up. And also, if we are doing a negative of any of these, say we wanted to do negative x squared or negative cube, uh, sorry, negative x cubed, then we would just flip the whole graph vertically. So a minus x squared and a minus x cubed go in that direction. Also, if we were doing minus of the modulus, it's being reflected in the x-axis again. Okay, so rational functions. This is where we have a fraction with polynomials. So, for example, 1 over x. That looks like this. We also have 1 over x squared, which is very similar, but we don't have the negative quadrant over there. It gets reflected up into the positive y values. You could also do things like this, x over x squared minus 1, but that one's not something you'd be expected to know intuitively. You would work out some coordinates for that one. Okay, so some examples. We are going to sketch this graph here. So the first thing is to factorise it fully so we can get the roots of um, the equation. We can see that it would be a positive cubic. If you multiplied out those brackets, it would give us a x cubed term at the beginning. And it will go through minus 1, 3 and minus 3. We get those roots out of the factorised brackets. So now we can have a go at sketching what it looks like. So positive cubic means it's going up to the right and it will go through minus 1, 3, and minus 3. We can also put the uh, y-intercept on there as well. If you multiply those the, the three last numbers of the brackets, that will give us the um, constant term in the function to be able to find the y-intercept. Okay, we'll do another one. We've got x squared minus 1, x minus 2, 4 minus x, and again we can factorise that one more step by doing difference of squares on that first bracket and then put the other two back in. Okay and now this will be an x cubed um, graph, sorry x to the power of 4 and the roots are 1, minus 1, 2 and 4 from our factorised um, brackets there. So it will have that sort of m shape um, to be an x to the power of 4 and then we can mark on all the points where it goes through. Including, of course, the y-intercept, which would be 8 from that 1 times 1 times 2 times 4.